I think it's time to start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar about ultra low dose menopausal hormone therapy when, how, and to whom. My name is Angelika Lindian Hirschberg, and I'm gynecologist and professor at Karolinska in Stockholm, Sweden. And I'm also the president of EMAS, the European Menopause and Andropause Society. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, before we, we begin, I would like to thank Abbott for their support and for making this webinar series possible. However, the program and the content are solely the responsibility of EMAS. And now moving on to some technical issues. You have entered this webinar into listen-only mode, and that simply means that your microphone is muted, so we do not pick up any noise from your end. And we do welcome and encourage you to submit your text questions via the Q&A icon located in your Zoom panel. You can enter your questions at any time and we will read them at the end of the presentation. Additionally, this event will be simultaneously translated and you can choose one of the following languages, Mandarin, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish or Ukrainian. And you may select the language by clicking on the interpretation icon you will find in your Zoom panel. Finally, I remind you that we are recording today's webinar and at, it will be accessible on the EMAS website. The first speaker is Dr. Alexandra Gromova. Uh, who is Assistant Professor of the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology and Neonatology of the National Institute of Postgraduate Education, Bogomolets Medical University in Kiev, Ukraine. And she is also a member of Ukrainian and Kiev Association of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and also a member of the International Society of uh, gynecologist and uh, gynecological endocrinology. And the title of your presentation will be about MHT and a, or a, a HRT in special cases. Please, Dr. Romova. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, at first, I uh, should say thank you, Imas, for having me here. And I should say thank you, Ukrainian Air Defense uh, Protected Forces, for saving my life, and I'm here. And we will try to find my presentation. And uh, some small technical moments. Sure. In the meantime, I remind everyone that you can leave your questions uh, using the Q&A, &A, as Angelica mentioned at the beginning. We encourage your comments via the comments uh, box, but please use uh, the Q&A for your questions. They are more than welcome. Thank you and welcome, Alexandra. My presentation, my speech about MHT or IHRT and some special uh, cases. My disclosure, this lecture is supported by Abbott, uh, but I have responsibility for all information I give you. Good things when we have uh, our patient healthy, without any comorbidities, without any medical conditions. Uh, but pity, it is a rare situation in middle aged women. And mostly we have estrogen deficiency in menopause, in women, when some medical conditions, some medical problems. And in this case, we have, uh, uh, we should uh, give more knowledge. Uh, we have uh, be uh, more uh, intelligence and uh, provide uh, some special decision. 
it's advanced level of our game with this situation. How should we compensate estrogenic, estrogenic deficiency in the following cases like uterine fibroids or endometriosis, hypertension or dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, this common situation with middle-aged women or age over 40 because uh, some of our patients needs uh, MHT in uh, this age. The, found the benefit and risk balance uh, in this situation, the basis of prescription MHT in women with special medical conditions. And uh, time by time, this uh, benefit risk balance like a thin line, and we should find it. Let's start with uterine fibroids. Uterine fibroids is most common situation in women around uh, 45, around uh, 50 years. Uh, fibroids have presentation of uh, estrogen and uh, progesterone, progesterone receptors. Growth is primarily progesterone dependent and uh, we have aromatization androgens and uh, uh, converting to estrogens direct in fibroids. When we look at uh, women with fibroids in this age, we should understand at least every fifth woman before uh, the age of menopause have fibroids. The most active symptoms uh, of fibroids in premenopause, but mostly uterine fibroids are asymptomatic uh, in this uh, age and more than uh, half of women are symptomatic. Uterine fibroids uh, are at low risk for breast cancer independent of MHD. Effect of MHD uh, was studied in women with uterine fibroids and what was found? Uh, let's uh, pay attention to estrogen and progesterone. As for estrogen and progesterone in the gym and uh, tibolone and serum, we have conflicting results. Uh, mostly size of uh, uterine fibroids stay stable, uh, but uh, when you provide estrogen plus progesterone, size can increase in 25, 25-28%, uh, unchanged 41%, and reduction in 31%. With tibolon and little bit the same, and with serum uh, that was found significant size reduction in some studies. Uh, when we look at women with uh, fibroids, we should uh, consider some practical points uh, before uh, provide MHT. Fibroids smaller than three, cent three centimeters rarely give growth. Uh, but uh, increased fibroids more than 25% uh, during the third years of therapy, quite rare and it is uh, about 8% of women. Uh, when we consider route of administration estrogen, uh, we should know that transdermal estradiol provokes uh, more uh, growth fibroids often uh, than uh, oral estradiol. Low dose of progestin and MHT are more acceptable and uh, provide less growth of fibroids. High risk of growth occurs up to two years of administration and later it's quite rare uh, situation. Uh, and as a result, we should monitor our patient at first, uh, firstly two years. And some practical points, uh, some common sense uh, for prescription MHT for women with fibroids. Uh, we should prescribe MHT to women who have asymptomatic uh, fibroids and have no education for surgery. Uh, sonographic monitoring of fibroids uh, growth is necessary, especially first two years, uh, because uh, in this period of time, MHT, uh, we can expect uh, growth of fibroids. It is more safe to prescribe MHT to postmenopausal menopausal women with uh, old fibroids of stable size. size. Mm. If fibroids increase by more than 25%, we should consider stopping MHD. And we should provide uh, drugs with low dose 
estradiol and low dose, dose progestin. Acceptable uh, drugs, femastone mini, uh, 0 0.5 milligram estradiol and 2.5 milligram dildrogesterone. What about some tumors, some special cases of uh, steroids, body uh, tumors? Group of tumors from uterine muscles of uncertain malignancy potential. And issues of treatment and observation remained controversial. And MHT in women with tumors of this type not been studied enough, studied enough, and now uh, better don't prescribe MHT. It's a bit more complicated situation for prescription MHT. Uh, women with history of endometriosis. Uh, when we have a patient with endometriosis, time by time uh, we expect of menopause for these women because menopause can provide relief of symptoms of endometriosis and endometriosis it is disease for young ovulatory women. But endometriosis is a risk factor for premature ovarian insufficiency and early menopause, especially in women who has bilateral uh, endometriomas and uh, who had uh, surgery. In the age uh, 35, 40 uh, bilateral uh, endometriomas in surgery, the leading cause for premature ovarian insufficiency. Endometriosis is a risk factor for osteopenia and osteoporosis, arthritis and arthrosis, depression and cardiovascular disease. The same risk factor uh, came as menopause. And uh, we have summarizing these factors. Mostly women with endometriosis have bad scenario of menopause. All of this uh, situation we can, uh, uh, we can keep under control with MHT, but can we provide MHT for patient with endometriosis or not? We have pros and we have contras. MHT uh, can decrease vasomotor symptoms, osteoporosis and arthrosis, decrease cardiovascular risk and depression. But we have contras. What about recurrence and malignancy? We should consider this negative scenario with MHT. When we look uh, to uh, abstracts uh, that uh, investigation in MHG and endometriosis, uh, we can find MHG increase the risk of recurrence, MHG increase the risk of malignancy, ovarian malignancy, and delayed MHG doesn't reduce the risk of recurrence. When if we look deeper and uh, we find that Evil and the detail, we can uh, find radical surgery have extremely low risk of recurrence. If our patient have total hysterectomy, they have extremely low risk of recur recurrence. Uh, when patient have definitive endometriosis at greater risk, uh, when uh, she has uh, some deposit of endometriosis. Increased risk of recurrence and malignancy uh, when for this uh, patient provide estradiol monotherapy. Increased risk of recurrence and malignancy uh, still with phytoestrogen uh, therapy, testosterone and tibolone. It is not the uh, decision for this patient, not the absolutely safe decision. Uh, for young women with uh, premature ovarian insufficiency as a result of endometriosis surgery, the benefits greatly overweight the risk. And the main point, uh, we should uh, avoid estradiol monotherapy for this patient. Uh, we have quite a new uh, review about uh, impact of hormone replacement therapy. Uh, this review comes from Korea on risk of cancer in postmenopausal women with de novo endometriosis and history of endometriosis, uh, especially uh, influence of ovarian cancer. With the exception of AHRT using estrogen alone, 
HRT MHT did not increase the risk of ovarian cancer in postmenopausal women with a de novo endometriosis or history of endometriosis. HRT, but not estrogen alone, can be used to improve the quality of life in symptomatic women with postmenopausal endometriosis, even after hysterectomy. And some practical points for women with endometriosis. Uh, how don't give Evil any chance to uh, make this bad scenario ovarian cancer, increase ovarian cancer, or increase recurrence. At first, careful selection of patient. Uh, presence of quite strict indication for MHT. Monitoring symptoms and use combination of estrogen and uh, progestogen, uh, even in cases of total hysterectomy. This patient over time uh, will take only combined therapy. And low dose continuous estrogen and progesterone like femostone conti and ultra low dose estrogen and progesterone like femostone mini is the best choice for this patient. Let's go ahead and uh, discuss uh, arterial hypertension and HRT. Menopause uh, connected with cardiovascular risk directly. Uh, it is indirect effect on cardiovascular risk, risk visceral obesity, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, increased blood pressure, chronic inflammation, and direct effect on vessels. Activation of the renin angiotensin system, angiotensin uh, 2 increased, endotelin uh, 1 elevation, uh, oxygen dust reduction. Doctor, uh, we have uh, indirect and direct effect uh, to uh, cardiovascular risk. In this age, uh, in the age of menopause, mostly uh, women have low physical activity, some mood changes, and sarcopenia, and it comes to obesity. Obesity and uh, atherosclerosis uh, comes to cardiovascular uh, disease and uh, possible stroke and cardiovascular infarction. Blood pressure and sex hormone, how it connect? Women with normal blood pressure live uh, on average five years longer. The protective role of estrogen is proven, but not fully understood. Menopause in an independent twofold risk of hypertension. The incidence of hypertension in postmenopausal women uh, reached 75%. And uh, after 65, we have gender equality and diabetes and hypertension and cardiovascular disease makes this equal and women overtake men uh, in frequency of hypertension. MHT, HRT and hypertension. Lots of controversies. Menopausal hormone therapy make uh, increase blood pressure, make decrease blood pressure, all stay it stable. When we look deeper, we can find differences between route of administration and type of progestin and its influences to uh, blood pressure. MHT can uh, give a slight but statistically significant uh, increase in blood pressure episode. Oral but not transdermal uh, estradiol route was associated with frequency of increases in blood pressure. Combination of estradiol with pregnancy and not pregnancy can increase blood pressure. Uh, two overviews, 2040 and quite fresh, 2022, and the same result. 70 better estradiol safer than conjugated equine estradiol. Uh, parenteral uh, route of administration has some advantages. Uh, when we look at uh, progestins, it was found that didrogesterone, drospirinone, and micronized progesterone have benefits according to blood pressure, influence blood pressure. 
MHT may reduce adverse effect of calcium antagonist and tyrosine diuretics. Before prescribing MHT, we should estimate cardiovascular risk and prescribe only for women with low or average uh, risk, um, mild risk for cardiovascular disease, not for women with high risk. Uh, we have a consensus uh, between uh, European uh, uh, Society of Cardiology and European Society of Hypertension about MHT prescription. Uh, this uh, document highlights that current evidence suggests that use of MHG is not associated with an increase in blood pressure. Uh, it is not contraindicated in women with hypertension, and women with hypertension may be prescribed MHG, uh, provided that blood pressure is under control with antihypertensive drugs. Firstly, women should go to uh, family doctor or cardiologist and take antihypertensive drugs and then go to gynecologist for MHT prescription. In this situation, it uh, could be safe. In 20, 22 years, uh, we have uh, brilliant documents, eligibility criteria for MHT prescription. Uh, as we know, this uh, type of uh, decision-making for uh, oral contraception. Uh, when we divide uh, women uh, for groups with low or high risk for prescription oral contraception. Maybe it's the same, um, uh, the same criteria for MHT. And uh, when we look for uh, blood pressure, look at blood pressure, uh, we find it in a uh, green zone, it is safe. Uh, when our patient under control of blood pressure. Then we look at uh, women who are smokers. Uh, they have a worse situation and uh, we should pay attention at first with, uh, with, for women with uh, active smoker. Uh, they uh, have more uh, dangerous situation than women with high blood pressure and time by time we don't pay uh, attention for smokers. Practical accent uh, for blood pressure, cardiovascular health, health, and MHT. At first, MHT is indicated to relieve menopausal symptoms, not for uh, primary uh, prevention. MHT may have a potential preventive effect of the uh, development of uh, uh, arterial hypertension, depression, but we don't use for only this indication. MHT dose and regimes, as well as the age of women, of the women, prominent safety factor for the therapy. CVD risk factors should be assessed before MHT is prescribed. In case of uncertainty about interval cardiovascular risk, it is recommended to consider coronary calcium index according to MCCT. Uh, MHT is not recommended for women at high risk and with a previous cardiovascular event. And MHT initiation is generally not recommended for asymptomatic women. And uh, we know uh, that a woman who has severe cardio, severe uh, hot flashes, severe um, vasomotor symptoms, they have uh, greater risk, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. It connect. And uh, when we provide MHG for women with vasomotor uh, symptoms, uh, we uh, provide them uh, prevention of cardiovascular disease. Go ahead and look at dyslipidemia. Six of menopausal hormone therapy and lipid profile, profile uh, quite good uh, investigated. We have lots of documents, we have uh, meta-analysis. Uh, MHC could significantly decrease the concentration of total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and lipoprotein A. Oral MHT significantly increased uh, triglycerides concentration compared with transdermal MHT. 
but oral MHT is associated with positive effects on LDL cholesterol concentration. For women without any risk of CVD or hypertriglyceridemia, oral MHT could possibly provide great benefits. The low dose MHT could achieve the same effects on lipid profile as conventional low dose MHT is still confused. Uh, maybe a greater dose of MHT have some benefits. The advantage of low dose MHT on lipid profile was possibly only confined on the triglyceride level. For women with uh, hypertriglyceridemia, uh, more appropriate low dose and ultra low dose MHT. In last position statement uh, for MHT and uh, women with uh, dyslipidemia. Systemic therapy has a uh, stradiol has a dose dependent effect of lowering triglycerides, LAD cholesterol, and increasing HDL cholesterol. Uh, oral uh, estradiol has a more pronounced benefit in low HDL cholesterol. Transdermal estradiol is preferent with high triglycerides. Dietrogesterone or micronized progesterone in MHT are the best progesterone because uh, they don't reduce the positive effect of estradiol and they should be the first option in women with dyslipidemia. Conditions that uh, connect directly with uh, dyslipidemia and uh, cardiovascular risk, obesity and diabetes. Uh, when you look at a uh, trial that investigate uh, menopause, estrogen deficiency and risk of type 2 diabetes, uh, we have the same direction from 2000 uh, to years. Menopause, estrogen deficiency, uh, increase the risk of diabetes type 2, especially uh, for women who uh, had uh, ovariectomy, uh, this risk uh, increased by uh, 47, uh, 57%. Effects of MHT at risk of type 2 diabetes. From WHI trial, uh, we have the same direction. MHT uh, decrease uh, risk of type 2 diabetes from 20 to 65%. Uh, women who has vasomotor uh, symptoms uh, has a higher risk of type 2 diabetes, at least at 80%, and it correlates with the intensity and duration of vasomotor symptoms. Uh, the same with cardiovascular risk. When we provide MHT for women with vasomotor symptoms, uh, we give them benefit reduction uh, diabetes type, two, type 2. MHT uh, has some benefits and uh, reduce insulin resistance as postprandial hyperglycemia and uh, decrease uh, risk of diabetes type 2. But despite the clear positive effects of MHT, the frequency of MHT administration in women with type 2 diabetes in 50% lower than in the general population. Our fears has some uh, win in this situation. Uh, Lancet uh, give us uh, a paper with uh, recommendation to use this age menopausal transition like a gold age to prevent cardiovascular disease. disease. Menopausal hormone therapy initiated before uh, 60 years of age or up to 10 years from the onset of menopause in women with vasomotor symptoms or at risk of osteoporosis is currently the only intervention that reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes in healthy middle-aged women. Uh, Emma's position. MHT has a positive effect 
or the glycemic profile in the both women without diabetes and women with type 2 diabetes. Timely initiation of MHT may delay the development of, of diabetes. Preferred oral MHT except absolute contraindication. In their contraindication to MHT and a high risk of thrombosis, uses transdermal form of MHT may be preferable. Uh, on the available and studied progesterone in oral MHT, digestrone and micronized progesterone are the best progesterone that uh, don't reduce the positive effect of estrogen. The uh, common question from women about hormones and weight. When I take hormones, uh, can it influence to my weight? It was investigated obesity in menopause. Lifestyle changes are the basis for our recommend obesity. It's uh, axioma. Weight gain is directly related to a decrease in estradiol level in menopause, and women who receive MHT have a lower risk of abdominal obesity and maintain body composition better. Even uh, if women have the same uh, weight, women who take uh, MHT have better body composition with uh, lower abdominal obesity. And what about muscle mass? Um, because uh, we know uh, some uh, menopausal phenomenon when women with uh, normal weight can have obesity because uh, they have low muscle mass and higher fat mass. That uh, investigation comes from Korea. It was investigated uh, more than 4,000 postmenopausal women and measured weight, waist circumstation, the ratio of muscle, uh, muscle and weight and total weight, and studied the history of arterial hypertension and MHT. Sarcopenia was positively correlated with a history of hypertension, duration of hypertension, and low physical activity. And extended MHT was found to be a protective factor against sarcopenia, uh, which was most pronounced in women under 55 year, years old. And ultra-low dose regime is the optimal choice for prolonged MHT in advanced age. And when we look at this uh, eligibility criteria, we can find a green zone for diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, uh, hypertension, but yellow zone for women with uh, obesity, body mass index, uh, BMI more than uh, 30. And we should pay attention for women with BMI more than 30. Uh, optimal MHT for metabolic syndrome and dyslipidemia, oral estradiol, and digesterone uh, or micronized progesterone as a progesterone. Women over 40 and MHT. How long uh, do azimatoid symptoms last? An average about seven years, but 8% of women have severe azimatoid symptoms longer than 20 years. And 60% of women aged 85 have vasomotor symptoms. Uh, we have situation when we need to uh, prolong uh, MHT because of exhausted vasomotor symptoms in advanced age. Absolutely different situation uh, when we uh, consider MHT initiation or MHT extension. MHT extension more safer and uh, we can use it. MHT initiation, uh, age over 60, may be a little dangerous uh, because of thrombosis risk. And uh, if uh, vasomotor symptoms uh, not stopped since menopause, we can provide uh, antidepressant or gabapentin for women who uh, didn't use MHT before. And first, Onset of vasomotor symptoms, we should exclude uh, hypothyroidism, tyrotoxicosis, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and uh, another uh, health condition. Because mostly uh, women don't have presentation of vasomotor symptoms 
10 years uh, after menopause. MHD extension, uh, extension have a controversial, controversial and uh, discontinuation of uh, MHD uh, in age 65 plus. It's not supported by uh, American uh, Gynecology and Obstetrics Association and uh, North American Menopause Association. And extension of MHD 65 plus is not supported by uh, American Geriatric Society. North American uh, position statement about MHD and advanced age. MHD is possible in women at low risk of thrombosis and breast cancer, high risk of osteoporosis, persistent of the vasomotor symptoms, and intolerance or failure of the other treatment. We should try other treatment if, if it, is it um, doesn't work, provide MHD. If you consider MHD, we should use ultra low dose of estradiol, consider transdermal form of estradiol, and didrogesterone or micronized progesterone as progestin preferable. MHD is not offered for prevention of CVD and dementia, uh, like only, uh, only prescription. Women should have vasomotor symptoms and we prescribe MHD, not primary prevention. When we look to eligibility criteria, uh, we can find uh, women over 40 in a uh, green zone if they uh, uh, take MHD before this age. If you consider initiation, initiation of MHD, uh, they will in yellow zone and better don't prescribe, use alternative option. And uh, age over 70, not appropriate for prescription MHD. And in the end, uh, I should highlight some points. Complicated does not mean impossible. And before refusing MHD, you should estimate the risk of both prescription and refusal of MHD. And that of the risk of MHD in group of patients with comorbidity, regularly reviewed and updated, we should keep uh, ourselves updated in this diet. And uh, we should remember, devil, in the details and look deeper. And uh, I thank you for your attention and uh, welcome to Kiev after our victory. Thank you very much for your presentation, Dr. Gromova. Uh, we had uh, scheduled for another speaker, Dr. Galina Grebinimkova. But uh, unfortunately, she was not able to join, be, join because of unforeseen circumstances. But uh, what is good now is that we have a lot of time for questions. And uh, we have got some uh, questions in the Q&A. Uh, uh, but please, uh, uh, you can, there's still room for more questions, but I will start with the first one. Maybe you can see it also, uh, Dr. Grumova. Uh, in patients with a history of heart attack or myocardial infarction and with risk factors well controlled, uh, taking statins and other medications and with normal blood pressure, can they start on low-dose transdermal HRT if uh, other alternatives do not work? What is your opinion about this? Unfortunately, my opinion we shouldn't uh, use uh, because uh, we look at this eligibility criteria and uh, when we uh, had cardiovascular events, uh, ischemic cardiovascular events, heart attack or myocardial effect infarction, uh, this patient in a red or uh, orange zone, not in blue and even yellow zone. Uh, exception for women who uh, had um, stent and uh, uh, they can use low, ultra low dose transable HRT. Mm. And so uh, they we should use uh, alternatives and, as antidepressant uh, not only phytoestrogens. 
uh, this uh, leads us to the next question. What is really the definition of low dose MHT and ultra low dose MHT? Could you please uh, uh, tell us about this regarding oral and transdermal estrogen? What do we really mean by low or ultra low dose? Uh, oral estrogen uh, low dose uh, one uh, milligrams uh, and uh, ultra low dose 0 0.5 and less. And uh, for transdermal estradiol, estradiol, the lowest dose that uh, can provide some benefit for uh, bone system, for example, uh, 0 0.15 protein transdermal. 0. Point. Uh, point uh, I mean, 14, uh, 14, 14, 14, 0. 14. But uh, um, transdermal is in microgram. So microgram, have, 0. Yeah, 14 have 20, microgram. Ah, okay, for, for, yeah, 20, 25 to 100 microgram transdermal patch, for instance. Uh, but maybe gel, you're, uh, you're point, talking about gel. Gel, gel, gel. Yeah, it's yeah. Because we, we also have the patch. Uh, it, it's about gel. It's the lowest dose of transdermal. Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. Uh, and here we have another question. Can we prescribe hormone therapy if the patient uh, has had a hysterectomy three years ago? Uh, absolutely. If a patient had uh, indication for hormone therapy, uh, it's okay, it's good situation. And in this situation, we can prescribe more therapy of estradiol, except uh, women with uh, endometriosis or previous uh, endometrial cancer, but mm. it's some specific situation. I think uh, the question maybe refers to that we should start the treatment uh, close to menopause. And uh, in, in this case, we do not know if the uh, patients uh, is only hysterectomized or or also have undergone bilateral hysterectomy. Yes. Yeah, we, we should know hysterectomy was in perimenopause age or postmenopause, and uh, how long uh, time postmenopause. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let me see what else we have here. Uh, we have been talking about the definition of ultra low and low dose. Uh, is there any risk of prescribing continuous HRT in premenopausal uh, women if cyclical HRT are not available? Uh, risk, not a risk, but it's uncomfortable because in this situation, women have spotting of more uh, unpredictable bleeding. Exactly, yeah. It's safe, but uh, it's not comfortable for women. Mm -hmm. uh, good, and we have another question here. What about using MHT in rheumatology conditions such as, let me see now, I'm not sure about these shortenings, <laughs> LES, and, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, yes. Uh, if patients have uh, no impact to vessels and uh, rheumatoid uh, arthritis uh, without uh, changes of uh, coagulation, uh, we can use transdermal, maybe more safe uh, use transdermal MHT. Mm -hmm. And now I can see that Dr. Galina Gravinukova has yes. arrived. <laughs> yes, Unfortunately, yes. you arrived a little bit late, but maybe you also yes. want, want to comment uh, to these questions. Uh, okay. So maybe let me see if we have another question here. Uh, in cases of stroke, low dose transdermal HRT can be given uh, as not thrombogenic. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Dr. Galina, do you want to comment on that question? Uh, yeah, I, I, good evening. I, I think uh, that uh, low dose uh, MHT 
it uh, good for women uh, with uh, uh, some symptoms and uh, i have a good experience uh, with uh, this uh, uh, low dose and uh, usually we started uh, after uh, 50 years uh, for example uh, we use uh, um, one uh, milligram uh, estrogen uh, and uh, five milligram uh, didrogesterones and after 12 months uh, usually i um, change uh, some time uh, for ultra low doses uh, for these women and uh, this is a good uh, practice and uh, I should but say would, that this would you really give it in a patient with a previous stroke? Sorry? Uh, this regards a woman with a previous stroke. Yeah. Would you give it to her? Uh, no, no. In cases of previous uh, stroke, uh, as for, uh, according to, uh, we have brilliant documents as a tool, this eligibility criteria. Just look at this and uh, provide safe option for patient and for doctors, because when our patients have complications, we have a great problem too, not only patient. And uh, yeah. about stroke, um, clarifying the situation, uh, when our patient uh, had thrombotic stroke and uh, they, uh, uh, she, she has uh, some risk factor, we shouldn't prescribe. Uh, if she had uh, ischemic stroke uh, in young age and any another risk factor, in, in, uh, she had stroke in young age and then she had our androgen estrogens influence, it's not a problem. Yeah? And uh, then any uh, risk factor, we can prescribe transdermal ultra low dose, low dose. Hmm. I so think in, in most cases, complicated situation uh, yeah. and, uh, women have uh, previous stroke. I have in my own practice, uh, women who have a woman who has uh, stroke, who had stroke, oh, bad English, sorry, and <laughs> her 27, and then a premature ovarian insufficiency and here uh, 35. A really complicated situation. I prescribed here with uh, transdermal. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important that in, in every case, we have to balance uh, potential risks with potential benefits. And of course, many factors uh, are involved in this, the age of the patient and uh, how much uh, symptoms she has. And also for young women, it's not only about treatment of symptoms, we have to also protect uh, against medical complications, uh, for instance, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis and dementia for, for a young patient that you mentioned with premature ovarian insufficiency. So uh, it could be quite complicated that uh, uh, balance all these factors. But I think that is the crucial thing, that for each individual, we, we have to do that. Uh, we have to keep have... in touch with this uh, patient and uh, be, sh be sure you have uh, all information and uh, have connection with this patient. Yeah, I agree. We have uh, more questions here, let me see. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, in the in the meantime, I will uh, thank you, Kalina, for joining us. Uh, we will not have time to to have your presentation at the moment, but I'd like to inform the audience that we will record your presentation, Kalina, apart, and then we will edit out so that people don't miss your uh, your valuable uh, yes uh, uh, presentation. Thank you so much, and sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, in women above 60, 60 years, will you consider transdermal 25 microgram patch? Yes, Who wants why to not? Comment? Why not? It's a good option, but uh, we should remember uh, we uh, should protect endometrium with uh, digesterone low dose or uh, micronized progesterone, the most safe progestins. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, and another question here. Uh, I am surprised of your recommendation for women over 60 years, considering the beneficial long-term effects of MHT on bone, arteries, vaginal health, cognitive functions. Does low or ultra low dose uh, offer the same benefits? I always uh, thought there was no limit age for HRT if stated, started early at the menopause and according to the women's preference? <laughs> um, the most complicated question, really, because uh, when we look uh, deep in history of MHG, uh, we can remember different approach. As long as possible, as short as possible, and uh, now we should find the optimal. And uh, since this optimal is about 10 years and uh, over uh, 60, uh, we should consider a risk and benefit balance. And if women has uh, vasomotor, severe vasomotor symptoms that uh, not controlled alternative option, yes, we can uh, extend MHT with ultra low dose. And we you know even uh, oral uh, 0 0.5 milligrams of estradiol uh, keep uh, bone uh, density. Not increase too much, but keep uh, uh, bone density. Transdermal maybe have some preferences, uh, but our tool, our document eligibility criteria uh, recommend us stop at 70 at least. Because I, I after, think it, after yeah, this, I think, age, you don't, don't have uh, enough information, at least. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, According but, to but, international guidelines, we do not have any age for stopping yeah. uh, MHT, but we recommend to start as early, uh, uh, to start as close to menopause as possible. And then we, we, as you, you said that um, it should be for normal menopause, it should be a symptom treatment and, and not for, for prevention. prevention. So, so I, I mean, in most cases, uh, five to 10 years would be uh, sufficient, I suppose. In a practical point of view, I think uh, then we should stop and look. If our patient uh, has uh, symptoms, vasomotor symptoms and other symptoms or not, and then... Uh, Dr. Medicine. Galina, do you want to add something? Yeah, yes, um, it's a very uh, interesting question. I have uh, some patients and one lady is 73 and second 74 and uh, they doesn't want to stop mm. <laughs> and now uh, um, they uh, use ultra uh, low doses um, uh, MHD. Mm. Uh, it's it's uh, my experience, and uh, every year we provide check, and um, uh, they uh, women uh, very happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think most of us have that experience with women yes. who, who, who do not want to stop. And as long as you have this uh, discussion with the patients and uh, yeah. inform them about potential risks, uh, but also benefits, and, and they, they really say that they want to continue, I, I think it's okay, but we should try to keep the, as low dose as possible. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, the real situation ultra, for ultra low dose, and we should discuss it with patient because it's really difficult to find the uh, balance between risk and benefit. Uh, in my practice, I have my colleague who take uh, MHC in age 78, but oh. yeah, but she takes <laughs> this responsibility. Yeah. Uh, maybe we have time for a last question. Let me see here. Uh, yes, when uh, a woman decrease her weight, will this decrease uh, her symptoms? And, and in that case, what symptoms? 
what do you think um, about that? Can you see uh, the question? Uh, maybe I don't understand correctly about this question. If, weight, if, if weight. weight decrease will will decrease menopausal symptoms. Gain weight or decrease weight? Decrease weight, decrease menopausal symptoms. Uh, maybe. Maybe we, yeah, we have uh, we have uh, some uh, studies about uh, connection between weight and uh, vasomotor symptoms, and uh, I was surprised at uh, studies because it is expected when uh, women have uh, more fat tissue uh, aromatization from androgens to estrogens and mm -hmm. less vasomotor symptoms, but not uh, we, uh, women with obesity. Uh, has uh, more vasomotor symptoms. But I don't know research about uh, influences decrease weight and no. decrease vasomotor symptoms. Yeah. I just don't know. No, I, I mean, we, studies have shown that uh, obese women have more symptoms than normal weight women. Than normal weight, but, yes. Yeah, but I don't know any studies, as you say, that have really shown if weight loss will, will decrease symptoms. What, what will these uh, symptoms? Mm. I don't know. You don't, that would be an interesting study, I think. <laughs> uh, do we have uh, some more questions, maybe? Um, uh, Okay, I think we, we, we take the last question now. Uh, should we be concerned if women have large fibroids, no bleeding with Mirena and are on estradiol low dose HRT? And, uh, and if we monitor the fibroids, I mean, if there is no, no bleeding problems, but at least uh, fibroids, should that be a concern? Uh, if no bleeding, no symptoms, no indication for surgery, uh, and uh, a woman has Mirena, we should provide ultra low dose estradiol or estradiol gel mm. or patch in this mm. situation. And monitor the size of fibroids by ultrasound. And remember that first two years of MHT, uh, the most uh, uh, most dangerous maybe uh, time for growth of myoma, and then uh, quite rare mm. growth, quite rare. Dr. Galina, you have the last uh, word here now. So if you want to yes, yes. give I some more important message, please. Yeah. Um, if if talk about IUD and uh, micro. Uh, nice progesterone i think it's good uh, point because uh, uh, it's uh, more uh, easy for women and um, i uh, i think it's a uh, uh, good practice and um, what i can say maybe healthy wealthy <laughs> and good quality life for each Hmm. Okay, thank you so very much. Uh, uh, I think it's time to end this uh, webinar. And, um, and thank you, all. Uh, first of all, the, the speakers, and also thank all the audience and, and with all your questions. I hope you think uh, this was uh, an interesting webinar. Bye to everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you everyone for attention. Thank you Angelica for uh, moderation this webinar. Thank you.